God, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Woo! We didn't come in here like we didn't know what was going on today. Oh, I came for an experience. Pastor prayed about an experience. I came for an experience. I pray that every Sunday, every time you step in the house, you get an experience. We come in the house just regular too much. It's time for an experience. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I want you to turn with me to 1 Kings 19 and 1. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to 1 Kings 19 and 1. And before I even start on this thing, let me pray to the Lord. Father God, I want to say thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you for what you're already doing in this house. I want to thank you for expectations, Lord. I want to thank you that your Holy Ghost, your spirit is in this room. I want to thank you that somebody is going to leave here saved. I want to thank you that somebody's going to leave here better and they ain't going to change. I want to thank you for what you're doing today. Lord, decrease me so you may increase inside of me and let your words that come out of my mouth be you and only you. In Jesus' mighty master's name, we pray. Amen. 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 I hear Ellis telling me amen. First Kings in 19 and 1. And it reads, Ahab told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done and how he had killed the prophets with a sword. So Jezebel sent message to Elijah saying, may the gods punish me severely if I don't have you dead by this time tomorrow. That's Stephen, probably that word dead, they probably ain't in your translation, but I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> then Elijah became afraid and immediately he ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba who belonged to Judah, he left his servant there and went on a day's journey in the wilderness. He sat under a broom tree and prayed and that he might die. He said, I've had enough, Lord, take my life, for I'm no better than my father's. Then he laid down and went to sleep under the broom tree. Suddenly, an angel touched him. The angel said, get up and eat. Before I go any further, I just want to let somebody know, just because you gave up don't mean God gave up. Just, just so you know that. Just because you quit don't mean God quit. So he looked. He looked and he saw some bread on some hot stones and a jug of water. So he ate, he drank, and he laid down again. Then the angel of the Lord returned a second time and said, get up and eat, or the journey will be too much for you. So he got up, he ate, and he had strength from this food to walk for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. And he entered the cave and spent the night there. Wow. Today's word is called, get up. What you doing down there? Yeah. Now I said, get up. What yeah. you doing down there? Yeah. In order for you to understand, this is a very spiritual word. To see what the world says is up, God don't say that's up. And what the world says is down, God don't say that's down. I remember when I got locked up and I was just sitting in a cell and many brothers said, I failed the day they locked me up and I've been down ever since. Well, in my story, that would have been a lie. I failed before I got there. It's when I got there that I saw Jesus and that's when I got up. <laughs> that's when I got up. You know, when you're getting high with people, then you go to rehab. People say, oh, you know, fell off, you went to rehab. But you failed before you got to rehab. Rehab is when you got up. <laughs> often when you come to church. You come to church and you often come to church. As soon as you get to church, folks that don't go to church no more talk junk about you going to church. But you the one that's down. I done got up. <laughs> I done came in the house and got up. You're the one who's down. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. I travel in the mountains all the time. And I see these little houses that sit by themselves. Houses sit by themselves, little houses on the prairie. But when I see big houses, the first thing we think is that house, that people is up. I remember working at Lone Care and I would go in houses here in Greensboro, $3 million homes, and them people were broke. You know, you didn't know that because you saw the house and you thought they was up. And God spoke to me. He said, Son, them people just got these houses sitting by themselves and sitting on hundreds of acres of land. Them people ain't down. <laughs> them people are up. But you know, if you read, we always think health is wealth and land is good. Without land, you got nothing. You can't own a house without land. You can't have a business without land. You can't start a restaurant without land. Land is very important. We don't look at it like that. Vladimir Putin, as terrible as he is, one thing he's fighting for is land. In the Bible, you'll read many times they fought over territory. They fought over land, but he's a terrorist, murderer, slaughterer, killer. I just knew we was going to get up. I knew when I saw them babies in them hospitals, bomb, we would get up. I knew when I saw pregnant women laying, we were going to get up. They said 900 people were laying dead in the streets. I said, we're going to get up. I was wrong. That's right. 
We didn't get up until Will Smith smacked Chris Rock. Every post, every TV station, every channel, we got up. I mean, everybody got up. It was on everything. And I ain't gonna sit here and tell y'all no lie. It was at nine o'clock around Sunday night and your minister got up. I said, I got to share this. And God said, put that phone down. It's Sunday. You ain't even shared the word of God today. But you're gonna share this mess. He had me put the phone back up. I looked at the timeline of the phone and it said, 915, 20,000 shares and comments. 915, 916, 30,000 shares and comments. 920, 50,000 shares and comments. This thing streamed 100 million times. And God said, son, I saved somebody today. Angels rejoice. Nobody streamed it 100 million times. I baptized somebody today. Angels rejoice. Nobody streamed it 100 million times. Oh, he said, I anointed my pastors in a house worldwide in churches, my elders, my deacons, my pastors. I anointed them a word to change your life. And nobody streamed it a hundred million times. Because what the world says is up, God don't say that's up. <laughs> and what the world says is down, God don't say that's down. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? I want to talk about a man named Elijah. Oh, there's an Elisha and Elijah. I want to talk about Elijah. Elijah was a prophet. He was raised up in the time where King Ahab was there. King Ahab was evil. He did more evil in the eyes of all the kings that came before him to God. King Ahab reigned for 22 years as king. What made King Ahab even worse is his wife was Jezebel. Now, it's one thing when you got, you know, power couples ain't always good when they're terrible. You know, <laughs> when you can talk to the husband, he's talking about, man, she be tripping. And you talk to the wife, he won't listen. But when both of them are terrible, this place, they're going to raise some terrible kids. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But his wife was Jezebel. And I want to tell y'all something funny about Jezebel. Every time I grew up this way, when you said Jezebel, I said, uh-oh, watch your name. <laughs> uh -oh. Jezebel finna take your man. You better watch. She's a Jezebel. But the Bible never spoke of Jezebel being a watch your man. I mean, this probably wasn't part of her characteristic. But let me tell y'all who Jezebel was. Jezebel was a murderer. Jezebel was a bully. Jezebel was a liar. Jezebel was a calling out Cleo liar. She killed God's Christians. Jezebel killed all of the Christians except for a hundred. The overnight you hid in the caves. He hid 50 in one cave, 50 in another cave, and fed them. Jezebel slaughtered churches. She didn't like the true living God. She served a bell. Jezebel is one who had a voice that could do damage. Yeah. So people who have talked purity junk about God's house and God's people, they were more of a Jezebel than any woman sliding down a pole, any prostitute in the streets. <laughs> more than any of that. If you're talking bad about my pastor, you are Jezebel. I'm just letting you know that right now. <laughs> You got Jezebel all mixed up. Jezebel, Jezebel had her father worship the face god of Baal, a false god. And they had 450 prophets of Baal. They had 400 prophets of Asherah, which was another face god, fake god. And he served sexual immortalities and orgies. So I think that's why people incorporate Jezebel with that. But I'm going to tell you something. I said it's 800 and 50 false prophets. And I said, well, how many members they got? And I almost said, how many members of the church? God said, don't you say church. You can't have church without the true and living God. Amen. Don't you dare put church on that. We learned in Revelation in the church of Laosadia, them people was having church and Jesus was knocking at the door. That's right. How you knocking at the door? I mean, I'm gonna tell you right now, I wonder because that still happens today. I know some people here to get mad, but that little song, they go do, 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 do. I love that when it's praise and worship. But when everybody feels like that's how they, the Holy Ghost is anointed, that's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. See, if you telling everybody who don't know no better, I first come to church, that song, come on, everybody get to jumping. I'm tapping my feet and views. Nothing's happening. I don't feel anything. What's going on? It's not in the Bible that that song does that. If that song did that, we'd be in Ukraine, do, 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 do. We'd be in church, we'd, do, do. we'd be at the hospital, do, 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 do. we'd be in jail, do, 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 do. That's a lie. You're praise and worship, but you're telling a lie. Tell them it's praise and worship. Don't tell them that that song brings the Holy Ghost in here. Because people who don't know, people that don't know no better don't know no better. Now, I mean, I'm serious, you know, we come into church and we got church stuff that ain't got nothing to do with this Bible. So when new people come in here, they don't get, they don't say it. 
don't feel like I belong with the code. There's something going on in there. I ain't, I ain't a part of it. Everybody is welcome in the house of the Lord. Everybody is welcome. She had 450 prophets, and false prophets live today. I want to tell y'all a story. And I want to tell y'all this story. It's a silly story, but it's a good one. Because I, I had this story where I, you know, I said Jesus and Jordan. And I don't want nobody to say, don't you compare my Jesus to Jordan. It was this Jordan and Jordan ash analogy that I had. I want to tell you, growing up, three brothers in the house. I wore Tony wore right, Rodney wore Tony shirt, red, passed down to me. Shoes, we couldn't do that way. So I remember and my cousin David knows my grandma and my mama used to go shopping, and Super Ten was here. Yeah. Maxwell. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember going in Super 10 and Maxwell and I seen Rawlings and Spaldings and I said, them Joe Laps, I ain't wearing that junk. <laughs> but then there was these shoes. They looked like Jordans. I said, oh, that's it. And they were $10. I said, mama gonna buy me these. <laughs> but when I got the box, the box said George Dash. <laughs> they look crazy. So I wore them the first year and then kids can be groomed. I found out the hard way, them joy dads and joys. <laughs> so for all middle school, I, I mean, all elementary, I had to wear joy dads. I about got slapped, mama. I told mama, okay, mama Jordan is spelled J-O-R-D. I about got my face slapped clean off my shoulders. I'm trying to tell my mama how to spell Jordan. But one thing I learned later about the Jordans was there's actual people who go and wait at 10 o'clock at night to 12 o'clock midnight to buy Jordans. There is people who have been murdered over a pair of Jordans. They've been killed over Jordans. So this is what I came to a recognition to say. I said, hmm, nobody's died over Buddha. Nobody's died over Confucius. Nobody's died being a Muslim. Nobody's died being an atheist, but Christians are still being killed for Jesus Christ right here today. Jesus must be the Jordans. Ain't nobody dying over your Jordans. I just saw. I just saw. I just saw. Oh, let me tell y'all something that just happened the other day. I just saw where in China, a husband and a wife, they came to knock their church over. They buried them people alive. The husband escaped with his life and his wife suffocated. Buddha over there. Ain't nobody died for Buddha. That's right. Buddha there too. Ain't nobody kill you over Buddha, but them people died trying to serve the true and living God. It's the real deal. Just in case you're confused. Just anytime, anytime anybody confused, whether they want to question you about Jesus, ask them how come anybody dying about your person. You know what I'm saying? It's real. God is real. And I want everybody to know God is real. So when the Lord decided to raise Elijah up, he told him, he said, go to King Ahab and let him know. Y'all ain't gonna get no more rain. But he didn't just say you ain't getting no rain. He said, you ain't even getting more than do. Yeah, Let me tell you, the little things matter. <laughs> the little things matter. A kiss in the morning matter. I, I love you matter. Because see, morning dew is the reason that the grass stays green when it don't rain. Morning dew is the reason that the flowers don't die. It's the morning to the little stuff. It was the little stuff. And he said, y'all ain't even getting that. So then he told Elijah, he said, now get out of here. They're going to try to kill you. Go on. Get out of here. So he sent them. Over to the Jordan, near the Wadi. If he was here a few weeks ago, Pastor Trees preached about the Wadi. It's a stream that runs dry in the summertime, but in the wintertime, it flows. But God just said there will be a famine. There will be nothing. So even in the wintertime, they ain't going to get nothing. But he sent Elijah to safety to go. He said, drink from the Wadi, and I'll send raven birds to feed you. Interesting thing about raven birds. Raven birds are big, unclean birds that are members of the crow family. Interesting. <laughs> Unclean birds that are members of the crow family. Okay. In Genesis, Noah let a raven bird go out to see if the flood is stopped. That's the first thing he sent. Leviticus, they talked about raven birds. Job talked about raven birds. Luke talked about raven birds. It was Jesus. Jesus said those birds neither reap nor sow, yet God feeds them and loves them. God saw those birds as representatives of his. He feeds them and loves them. And then Jesus said, well, how much more will he love you? <laughs> And I said, oh, my God, the birds don't look like God, but you and I, you and I, we are his likeness and image, so when you fall short, get back up. <laughs> if an unclean bird can be loved by God, when you slip, get back up. <laughs> don't stay there. I want you to get back up. 
the raven birds the Lord, how much more will he love you? And y'all have to excuse me because I've been reading this thing, so I'm, I'm, I'm on my way to 1 Kings 17 and 8. I'm talking about the miracles of Elijah. This next miracle is something that I like personally. It's when Elijah went to the widow. God told him to get up and go to Zarephath to sit in and look there. He said, I have commanded a woman, a widow, to provide for you there. So Elijah got up and went to Zarephath. When he arrived in the city gate, there was a widow gathering wood, and Elijah called to her and said, hey, please bring me a little water and a cup, bring me something to drink. As she went to get it, he called her and said, hey, please bring me a piece of bread. But she said, as, yo, as the Lord God lives, I don't have anything baked. I only have a handful of flour and a little bit of oil in a jug. Just now, I was gathering some sticks and about to prepare this for me and my son could eat it and we could die. It's a famine going on. There ain't nothing else for her to get. She about to eat and she about to die. That's crazy. And Elijah said to her, well, don't be afraid. Do as I have said, but first, make me a small loaf and bring it to me. I just said I was about to eat and about to die. You talking about Vicky, you something anyway? <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? But he told her, go ahead and do that. He said, afterwards, you may make some for yourself and your son, for this is what the Lord of God of Israel says. The flour jar will not become empty. The oil jug will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. So she proceeded to do according to what Elijah said. Then the woman and Elijah and her household ate for many days. The flour jar did not become empty. The oil jug did not run dry. According to the word of God, it was spoken through Elijah. It didn't run dry. What I love about this woman is because people got keeping it real mixed up. Y'all yeah. think because, I'm not going to say y'all, people think because somebody with 5 million, 50,000, 15,000 loans you $500 that they're keeping it real. The people I know keeping it real give you their last $5. Yeah. They give you their last $5. You got this twisted. You got this whole thing twisted. See, I'm going to tell y'all something, and I hope everybody understands this. If somebody needs to borrow $20, give them for it. Stop with the mess. You ain't helping them by borrowing them borrow that money. If they done their last 20, give them 40. Come on, you're supposed to sow to your people. Help your people. Serve God, serve others. This woman trusted God. And now she's not eating food line. She's not eating Harris Dita. She got Sam's Club groceries in her cabinet right now. Y'all hear me? Because she trusted God. She eating good, good. She eating good, good. I'm talking about I trust God. I'm gonna get, see, that's where we get it twisted up in. If you give from your heart, God will give to you. People come to church and want to hear my position. But God don't want your money, He wants your heart. He wants to know you trust Him with your life. Give it up, man. Stop playing. So when he did all of that, when she gave her last and they ate good, but then something happened. Her son grew ill and he died. Yeah. So crazily. First thing she did was ask Elijah, is that why you came here? Point out my sins? Kill my son? First time something starts going wrong in your life, you blame God. There is a devil running wild, but y'all got to understand, it's the fall of man. It's not always the devil. It's the fall of man. Your bad decisions are the fall of man. These storms and weather are the fall of man. It's not God. God is not evil. He can't be. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's he right. can't be. Right. So when he died, Elijah said, give him to me and let me go to the upper room. Uh, we always want to go up when it's time to talk to God. Yeah. You always got to go up because what the world says is up, God don't say that's up. And what the world says is down, God don't say that down. So even Elijah prayed and asked God, hey, you send me here to, you know, had this woman turn down, I'm living with her and all this stuff, got me in the crib. And then he prayed, God heard his prayer. And he went over the kid three times and he brought the kid back downstairs and he was alive. What I found was the woman said, you are the true and living God. Yeah. Wait a minute, these sound clothes, groceries didn't convince you? <laughs> there was a family, no, your neighbors are starving. You eating leftovers and cooking something else. That didn't convince you that God was God? I mean, come on, that, that wasn't enough? Every time somebody's about to die or something's about to die in your life, here come you screaming, Jesus. Ain't been to church in 20 years, but I know the Lord got me because I don't want to die. Now, come on. As soon as it's time for something to die, then you start mentioning Jesus. That wasn't enough. That wasn't enough. I didn't say Harris either. I didn't say food. She eat sand for groceries. That's the stuff by the boat. That's the big stuff. 
God ain't gonna send no cheap stuff. He sent the real stuff. That wasn't enough for you. This is crazy right here. So then the woman said that she had her aha moment. Have y'all had your aha moment yet? I constantly have my aha. It was nobody but God. <laughs> Let me tell y'all a little story about me in this blue bag. This was God gave me the aha moment. It was supposed to be my first preacher, but you know, you know, the Holy Ghost will change it. I used to have this blue bag years ago. My mama gave it to me. And if I came to your house and I dropped that blue bag off, I live with you. <laughs> everything I own was in that blue bag. I'm telling you, everything. This one was an aha moment when I was sitting in my one room in the house. And God said, son, your pictures wouldn't fit in that blue bag. Your silverware wouldn't fit in that blue bag. The chairs wouldn't fit in that blue bag. Your table wouldn't fit in the blue bag. Your suits wouldn't fit in that blue bag. Your socks and boxes wouldn't fit in that blue bag. See, when you get with God, you outgrow the blue bag. I'm too big for a blue bag. Aha! Aha! I'm too big for a blue bag. Uh-uh. I'm too big to just sit here. God said, get up. You got to start talking. I'm too big to just sit here and not praise. Uh -huh. You ain't outgrew your blue bag yet. You ain't calling on God just yet. Get your aha moment and realize what it done for you. He done did some stuff for you. He done did some stuff for you. Oh, God done did some stuff for you. Now the family don't went about three years now. It's been about three years. They ain't had no water. They ain't had nothing. So God, he told Elijah, it's time for you to go in front of Ahab and tell him, show your face to Ahab. So it says when he was on his way to show his face to Ahab, he ran into Obaniah. I told y'all that Obaniah had saved the prophets, did it. Jezebel tried to kill. She killed all of them except for 100, and Obaniah saved them. Here's the interesting question. If you wonder, okay, well, how is Obaniah down with Ahab, but he believes in the true and living God? Well, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to make it this easy for you. Joe Biden is your president, but he ain't your Jesus. Donald Trump is your voice, they president, but he wasn't they Jesus. Barack was they president, but he wasn't they Jesus. That's why Obamiah is still here because he believed in Jesus, but that's not his king. That's not his president. I'm going to tell you that's how Obamiah was there up under the servant of this guy. Come on, so he came. It's true. Oh, yeah, he had to tell him. And when, he, when, when King Ahab seen Elijah, first thing he said to him was, Is you again, troublemaker? Yeah. 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 Start all that mess around here. We ain't had no rain since you showed your face. It's you again. Oh, my and then Elijah, you know, said, no, it's not because of me. Because y'all keep serving these false gods. That's why you're going through some stuff. You're going through some stuff because you ain't walking with God. Listen, even as a Christian, we have to be careful because there's areas in our life where we won't include God. You, you get mad and you won't talk to God. You got some areas in your life, God, don't even, you ain't even act like God ain't supposed to know about this. Obaniah said the most interesting thing when he, when he told him to go get his king. He said, hey, if, if God take you away and I bring you back and you ain't here, the king going to kill me. And then he said, didn't you all tell Jesus about what I did about hiring them prophets? God know everything you did, good and bad. Don't get this twisted. Ain't nobody got to tell God about what you do. We pray on your behalf, but he already know what you did. <laughs> we do that every Saturday. He know what you did. We ain't got to do, we ain't got to do all of that. So, you know, you do, like you, like you hide from God. Oh, we people go in the closet and the they think because the church didn't see him, God didn't see him. That's why they want to talk about somebody else's mess. You quit to talk about what somebody else is doing because you think you got away. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, people are there. the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel was a mess. Messy people always talking bad about you. Messy people ain't never got nothing good to say about you. Messy people are smile right in your face and talk pure things about you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Elijah told him, and this is what I love because this is when it gets to the good stuff for me. Yeah, this is when it gets to the good stuff for me. The good stuff is when Elijah said, now let's go ahead and have a contest. Let's have a sacrifice. I want to see who's the true and living God. So since 450 prophets of Baal is here, and it's just me, let's build some altars. And whoever God like the fire, that's the true and living one. Put them sticks and rocks down. And get that dick out your hand. I see you cheating. I want you to do this the right way. See? This is what he told me. See, I'm going to tell you all about these false prophets. Why you got to be careful. False prophets exist today. Yeah. I was watching a TikTok video my brother, shockingly, it was a brother. He said, prove to me that Jesus is real. 
Prove to me your Jesus rose from the grave. If you prove to me Jesus rose from the grave, I'll pay all your bills. Where is it in the Bible? I said, I got to click on comments. I can't believe people going for this. A sister said, the devil is a liar. Jesus wasn't in no grave. He was in a tomb. <laughs> These prophets exist. Scientists say, I can do everything God can do. Scientists said, I can do everything God can do. He said, oh, really? They said, yeah. God said, you can make man from dirt. They said, yeah, we can do it. God said, do it then. They reached down to get dirt. God said, whoa, what you doing? You better get your own dirt, bro. You ain't going to say it's cheap like that. What you doing? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Get your own dirt. You going to try to duplicate me with my stuff? Get your own dirt, bro. So these prophets, these prophets, they don't sit up their altar. And Elijah said, y'all go first. Y'all, y'all go first. It's, it's so many y'all, it's just me. Y'all go first. So they started doing what they was doing. They said they started dancing, going around and around and dancing. And Elijah started making fun of them. So I thought about it. if I was Elijah, I started saying, do the kid play. Do the dab. Do that new running man. Hey, 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 hey. You got to do something else. That ain't going to work. Elijah was making fun of them. It wasn't working. And so they tried to cut their arms, slip blood gush all over the altar. They let blood gush. I guess Elijah, if he was saying things like Stephen, I was like, oh, no. You joke is going to kill yourself. Just stop. So then it said Elijah built the, uh, the altar that they tore down. You gonna tear up my stuff for somebody fake? You gonna tear up our friendship for some fake people? You gonna quit my church to go lay in your bed on couch after you don't talk junk to all these people about my church? You gonna tear down God's real stuff for something fake? Come on. You tore down the true and living for fake stuff. You ain't never had nobody switch up on you for somebody they knew wasn't no good. You know them people ain't hitting on nothing. You're going to switch up and tear my, tear my love down. I've been holding you down all these years. You're going to tear my love down. That's what they did. They tore his love down. And then, so he rebuilt the altar. And they said he got 12 stones representing 12 sons of Jacob. Y'all will hear prophetic numbers all the time. 12 is a beautiful one, one for me. Because for 12 years, I've been sober. For 12 years, I've been saved. And on the 12th year, I became a minister in the gospel. Hallelujah. 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 I can drop the mic right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said that he got those 12 stones and he had dug a trench. Then he told him to get four jugs of water. He told him to put water on his three times, fill the jugs up three times and put them on there, which is, well, that's interesting. I mean, I, I'm from Kama Country Boy. You don't put water where you're trying to build a fire. Yeah. Right. That, don't, that don't make sense to put water where you're going to build a fire. And then he said, Elijah, when he prayed, he prayed to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as a covenant, as a promise. So he was praying to the promise that God had gave to his fathers before him. And he said, God, send a fire. I just need you to burn up this bull to prove that you're real. God burned up everything. He said, God, lit the water, the fire, lit up the fire. fire. He burned everything to ask. See, God don't want to play no games. He wants you to know when it's him, right. it's him. Right. You can talk all you want to talk, but when it's God, it's God. Ain't going to be no mistakes. Ain't going to be no mistakes to be made. That's right. So right after that, Right after that begins to happen, they said, Elijah, the people said, oh, you are the true and living God. They got their aha moment. He's the true and living. And Elijah summoned all the prophets of Baal. And he killed all 450 of them. 450 people. But God said, don't let my people focus on the number. 450 don't matter. All you need is one God. It's just one God. This you need. See, numbers ain't always great. 30 people in your marriage is a terrible marriage. 30 people running your mouth about your business. That's a third. That's a terrible story going around about you. I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes 30 is better. I'd rather 30 people jump me than three because three will send you to the hospital. 30 people just going to be bumping each other trying to kick me. I might get up and walk away from that. The power and numbers don't mean nothing if you ain't got God. All you need is God. It's not always the best to think that you got to have all these people around. Don't find out like Minister Dillard. It's lonely at the top. You won't know you had to talk to you hit the bottom. 
Oh, you got 50 people when you on top to call you every day. You don't know five when you on the bottom. I wasn't even looking for letters in prison no more. I gave up. I just walked off. They called for letters. I did. Ain't anybody want me? They ain't like me. Your phone blew up when you was out here, out here and you had what they wanted, though. The numbers ain't always jumping like you think they is. What the power of two can do with prayer. God didn't tell you that for nothing. He said what two can do. You looking for 22 and 202, he said two can do that right there. So after he slaughtered those men, I thought it was interesting that he told King Ahab, go and get you something to eat, get you something to drink. See, God will bless you in front of your enemies. Yes. First, Elijah, he said, get out of here for Ahab killed you. Second, he came to Elijah and said, troublemaker. Now Elijah giving him orders. Go and get you something to eat, drink, King. I, I, I'm telling you what to do now. You ain't running nothing no more. You see who the true and living God is. You don't serve him. I do. That's why y'all need to tell these devils when they come in your face. Wait a minute. You don't know Jesus. He's talking all this. You don't know my God. I don't care what you're talking about. You don't know my God. This is not happening. Because he looked like it was good to rain is what Elijah was saying to him. So he told him to go eat. Then he went up. Let me find this. I don't want to say this wrong. Let me find where this scripture is at. Oh, yeah. I'm on the wrong page. I'm sorry. On the seven, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's in 17 and 42 where he told Ahab to get something to eat and drink. And he went up to the summit of Carmel. He bent over on the ground on his face and his knees. So he went up and looked and said, he asked the servant to look up towards the sea. So when he looked, the servant said, there's nothing. He said, do it seven times and go back. Another prophetic number is seven. On the seventh time, he reported that there's a cloud with a small man's hand coming out of the sea. Lord, that was the hand of God. That was the hand of God. Many people say they ain't seen the hand of God because they're actually looking for a hand. Look back at your life. There were some people right in here that were laying on a hospital bed that the doctor said you weren't going to get back up, but you got back up. There were some people in here. I heard of a woman tell me when she went to the doctor because the doctor said your heart repaired itself. I saw the hand of God just working it out for the sake. You got to know what the hand of God looked like. When you didn't have nothing like a widow, Mm. Now you got some. It was the hand of God. Then it was told, go back to Ahab, you need to hurry and get home. Because it's going to rain so hard, you ain't going to be able to make it unless you go. That's how hard it's getting ready to rain. When God make it rain, it ain't like your little rappers. Your little rappers can only make it rain in the strip club. When God make it rain, he changed a nation. Oh my God. <laughs> when God make it rain, I want God rain. Somebody say, I want God rain. Man, I don't want the regular rain. I don't want the rain of your homies. It's only pertaining to a certain group or class of people. I want God's rain. It's for everybody. God didn't care what color you was, how old you was, what you looked like, how much money you had. When he made it rain, you was going to eat, baby. That's real. Mm, I like it when God makes it rain. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When God makes it rain. So then God wasn't through making these miracles happen with a lot. So King Ahab got on the chariot. Horses, and he's going home. Now, I don't got to the age where I can't even outrun a 10 year old. But he done up here and gave Elijah the strength to outrun the horses. And it said it was about 16 miles. So I'm going to tell y'all, that's like Lisa here going to Reedsville. He done went to Reedsville and outran the horses. He didn't even get tired. Outran horses and didn't even get tired. Jesus Christ. God done gave this man some strength. He done gave him some strength to run all the way home and outrun, outrun the horses. And that's when Elijah got home. That's when Ahab got home. And he told Jezebel everything. And Elijah got sick. The woman said, as surely as my God lives, as surely as my God lives, I was driving in the truck and I got so mad at Elijah because I said, Elijah, wait a minute. Didn't we just prove this couple of her God don't live? 
We just oh God don't live. What you running for? Yo, God, don't live. And you didn't stay. We just fought. Yo, God, don't bail didn't show up. Bell didn't show up. We was looking for Bell. We tried to hit him up on Facebook. We, we followed him on Instagram. Bell didn't show up. We see that he had a TikTok page. Bell didn't show up. Somebody do old Bell, FaceTime him. He didn't show up. So what are we running from you for? Yo, God, don't live. Everybody said it was the devil. The devil, yo, God, the devil know God live, but he don't fool with him. Everybody trying to talk about what they God look like. Yo, God, don't live. Yo, God ain't the true and living. We come from rocks. Who created the rock? We come from stars. Who created the star? You fools. Yo, God, don't live. And I thought about it. It was so funny because it was like, what are you afraid of? But I want to tell y'all something. You don't know what you get scared of. Fear hits different. Fear hits different. Pastor preached about it last Sunday. I was on the edge of my seat. I said, oh, Lord, he's scared to go there. See, we all talked about Peter. Peter denied Jesus three times. Peter denied Jesus. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go back to Peter was walking on the water and then he took his eyes off Jesus. I hope that my faith ain't water. I can't swim and I'm scared of sharks. So I'm just letting you know. I'm, 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 uh, God, put a sidewalk out there. You know what I'm saying? It's wobbling, Lord. Is it you? You know, so we don't know. We don't know. We just try to act like we just so strong on faith. We don't know till you get there. But we deny it. We deny it. We did it. We talked to just Peter wasn't no punk. Peter cut a man's ear off. He wasn't no punk. But we act like he was a punk because he denied him three times. Well, let me tell y'all something. Peter was raised to fear Roman soldiers. Watch this. I used to go to Raleigh Street Pool Room, right? We would go to Raleigh Street Pool Room. Now, I'm from Brown Summit. Now, everybody know in the 80s and 90s, it was a country ghetto. But we loved each other. But I'm not from Harrison Homes. I'm not from Hampton Homes. I'm not from the Grove. I'm not from Ray Warren. I'm not from Claremont. I'm not from any of those projects. But I hung in Rally Street Pool Room. I went to all of those projects like it wasn't nothing. Never scared. Never scared. They used to stab and fight yeah. Rally Street Pool Room. I remember this one night. They were shooting. And because we knew the shooter was shooting that way, we continued to smoke weed and drink and watch them do what they do. But as soon as the police came, we said, oh, shoot, uh, uh, and everybody got this. Isn't it interesting that we weren't scared to see our brothers kill one another, but when the cops came? Let me tell y'all something God said. When George Floyd died, y'all get it in a minute. When he died, I was sitting there watching. This is the crazy thing God said, because he said all this to me this week. I said, well, people was tired. They was fed up. I said, no, they were in fear. They were scared. That's why they burnt down the buildings and tore up everything. They were scared. You want to know how? I have seen a black grandma get robbed by a black man gunpoint broad daylight. I didn't see no protesting or nothing. I have seen brother after brother after brother right. after brother get right. murdered, and nobody has done nothing. Right. Fear right. hits differently. Right. You'll run to fear. You'll listen to somebody you would never even talk to when you get scared. Oh. You'll take advice from a stranger when you're scared. That's right. The good thing about fear is it'll make you run back to God. But other than that, when you're scared, you don't know what you'll do. Some men fear going to jail. Yeah. Other men fear not being able to raise their children. It's a different thing on how the fear hits. Ladies, I'll tell you a secret. A man treats you like dirt until he gets scared you're going to leave. Oh, he fear losing you. I don't care how he treats you. He fear losing you. And fear makes people act different. Here come the apologies. Yeah, sorry about what I said the other day. You know what yeah, yeah. You said fear does things. Fear hits differently in our lives. And because you don't know what you're scared of, don't talk about nobody else being scared. So I'm a, I'm a straight up song called Bass Stuff. I'll tell you that right now. But if a pit bull come in here, I'm going to say, okay. I ain't sticking around. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, you don't know what you're scared of. That's why you got to have grace for everybody because you don't know what they've been through. You got to know people still. If you weren't raised being beat or molested, you can't talk about how people act the way they act. If you have never been abandoned, you can't talk about people that feel isolated. You got to know this stuff, man. 
I'm just saying it's there is different. And when we say it, we act different, we, 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 we move different. See, y'all got to understand something about Jezebel saying what she's saying. Jezebel had a name for herself. For herself, she had a name. That's what's scary. But I want to tell y'all about God's love. In the Bible, Jesus talked about a widow that gave her life. Mm -hmm. That woman was a widow that's eating sound club groceries. Didn't need them have a name. Don't think because you ain't a celebrity that God don't love you. Don't think because you ain't got a position that God won't feed you to you too. You don't have to have a name. So Elijah went away from that woman that was a widow. He ran from the one who had a name for herself. Having a name for yourself ain't always good. That's Will Smith. Will Smith sat down until his wife looked at him. Then he got up. And what the world says is up and what God says is up. What the world says is down. What does God say is down? I want you to know something. If you're laying on a hospital bed telling God, I thank you, there's people on vacation that refuse to go to church. You're doing better than they are. God got more love for you than he got for the one who's healthy and can't say thank you. Oh my God. See, I'm going to tell you, Elijah was no different from you and me. He just believed God more. That's how all of our problems, including Steve. We don't believe God for the mountain that we want him to move. We believe him for McDonald's meal. You know, we believe him for something to eat. Right. When God trying to get you the restaurant. Yeah. You believe him for a job, but he want to give you the career. Yeah. <laughs> you believe him for this, for the now, but he's also there for your next. What did you say to me the other day, Pastor? He said, God already waiting on your next scene because he know you're going to mess up. He already got grace for that right there. I want to tell y'all real quickly because I had this this morning. Sinner and sinning. What all these people tell you, sin, do. The difference between sinner and a sinner is one of them is intentional and the other one is. One of them is apologetic and the other one don't care. I'm just telling you what the Holy Ghost is giving me now. I didn't write that. I ain't in my word. I'm just telling you what God said to say. This is different because that fear and that loneliness is something. It's something when you run from people. You're running from what they say. I don't care what none of us say. Let me tell you something. If that church up the street say they don't like me, I don't care. As long as the people in here don't say it. I care about y'all. You know what I'm saying? But as Elijah, he got up and ran. So I'm going to tell you, I'm pretty sure I, I don't have as much experience with it as pastors now probably do, but do you know how many times people will get up, come to church, bam, God will get them up, yes, set them free, mm -hmm. and they run right back to their bondage. Right. My Lord, my Lord. Run right back to the thing you came in here crying about. Sometimes you got to have that thorn because if you don't cry, you won't come. It's an empty seat snapper that ain't got that thorn. I hope my brother don't see this message, but my oldest brother Tony, I knew when he had a thorn. Negro had been to church in 20 years, but as soon as he do something, he got a suit on. Here come Tony. What did you do, Tony? <laughs> what did you do, Tony? You did something. See, you trying to go take today. You did. But see, the, 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 the thing about Tony that we're laughing, but here's what's smart about Tony. Tony knew that only Jesus could do it. There's people that go to church that don't know only Jesus could do it. That's why you call other people before you call Jesus. They can't do nothing. They can't fix this. My goodness, they can't fix this. Elijah ran. And I'm, I, I, was, I was so mad. I like, Elijah, did you see all the things God had you do? You stopped the rain, you fed the widow, sang club groceries, brought her son back to life, killed 450 prophets, brought the rain back, ran 16 miles, beat the horses. Who, who outruns horses for 16 miles? I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I bet you I ain't going to run to the to our mailbox and back. But I, I'm out of breath, Lord. I ain't going to make it. Tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> but he done did all this. God done strengthened him to do all of this. But he was scared of when she said something. That's why you got to be careful because he, the thing that God gave me, what was it, Lord? Bring it back to my memory. He brought me back to this movie of Jurassic Park. The very first movie of Jurassic Park. They asked them how did they tame those dinosaurs, and they said they got this big fence, this electrical. But some of the dinosaurs got smart. They would test the fence for weaknesses, but they never test the same place twice. I want to let y'all know the devils come right back. 
Because see, if you're in your feelings and you come out of your spirit, he's going to catch you there. Yeah, they come right back. That's what they do. Same place. They'll come right back to that same place over and over again because they know at some point in time, you ain't going to keep on staying with Jesus. At some point in time, it's going to feel a little good to you. At some point in time, you're going to get mad. And they're going to enter in right there. Door didn't have to be open, just unlocked it and let them in. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So when Elijah ran and he laid down, wishing that he could die, God sent an angel to tell him, get up and get you something to eat. Mm -hmm. See, he said, I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you. He said, I supply all your needs. But here's the thing that I think we miss out as a church, we miss out as a people. We don't ever think that the needs is people. You're always looking for a book bag or something, or some supplies and pencils and stuff. God sent people. When he had this church built, people had to build it. People had to clear the land. And then when it's time for pastor to preach, he needed people. God sent people. You're missing out on life because you're not using God's people. You keep using the same people that ain't never been hitting on nothing to start with. Come on. God sent you people. He sent your help. He gave you what you need. God gave you what you need. He's been sent you what you need. This is the thing that people do all the time. We have let these people insult these hospitals for years. I don't need no doctor. I got Jesus. Jesus sent a doctor. Right. <laughs> these people like this. Who do you think sent the doctor? God supplied all your needs and he sent people for conversation, for love, for help, for the little things, whatever. He sent you people. You can't have a business without people buying it, man. You can't have a church if you got no members. You can't have a marriage, you got no problem. He sent people. And when he sent these people, we can't take them for granted. Don't ever send, don't ever hurt what God sent to help you. Amen. It's a lot of brokenness. It's a lot of brokenness. It's easy to happen. It's easy to hurt the people God sent to help because you'll see them as the people who were once in your life. Yes. Let me tell you something. When he said, I come to give you new grace and new mercy, everybody hears grace and mercy, but they forget about new. Yeah. Every day, God sends something new. Yeah. New opportunities. Yeah. New ways yeah. to look at life. New visions. Yeah. New thought processes. Yeah. New people. Yeah. New patterns. So you keep doing the same thing. You can't, you can't survive in church with a liquor house state of mind. <laughs> you just can't do it. You can't come in here thinking like you was thinking out there. It ain't going to work for you. God come to give you a change. God come to change your mind. If you ain't going to change your mind, how is it going to work for you? That's not the way you got to change your mind. He is sending you somebody. He sent that angel to give him something to eat. You got food when you didn't have food. You got things when you didn't have things. B, let me get that song, brother. Lord, I tell you, God has been good today. He has fed us today. He has supplied all our needs today. And I'm grateful today. Because he has told us about Elijah that did all those miracles, yet Elijah was no different from him. He didn't shoot any spider webs. He didn't knock any bills. He didn't put on a cape and fly around. All he did was pray and he trusted. There's power in prayer. All you got to do is believe to the one you pray into. Don't believe in Stephen. Believe in your God. That he's going to do something miraculous in your life. God wants to do something in your life. He wants to do something different. Turn it up just a little bit, B. I don't care whether you're going up or going down. Don't try to go there without God. Don't try to do nothing without God. I want anybody in this house today that needs a prayer. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't belong to a church, if you need some kind of prayer, I don't care. It's not between me and you. It's between you and God. Come on up to this altar and get prayed. Come to this altar because listen, don't ask God to try to do it without God. Don't keep praying without God. Don't keep trying to go there without God. God wants to do something in your life today. 
Somebody was hurting, somebody was feeling something, somebody got their children better, somebody wanted their health better, somebody wanted their money better, somebody's wanted their minds better, somebody's wanted a new job, somebody's wanted a new career, somebody's wanted a new thought process, somebody is hurting, somebody is going through some things and they're tired of going through those things. And God wants to do it. Whatever it is that God is doing, don't try to do it without. Don't try to do it without. So it's green to the day. You already got up when you came to healing. You ain't down where you was when you came to healing. You done got up. Oh, Lord, whatever it is that you're doing. If you're healing right now, Lord, come on and heal when you see. Parents and hurt children on this thing, Lord, if you are healing, please don't do it. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come on and pray for the
moment with you. And I thank you, Lord God. Now, everybody that's standing here today with a loud voice say, I believe. I believe. Thereby, Thereby. I, receive. I receive. I don't care, I don't care. What, it like. what it look like. My God, my God. is working, working on my behalf, my in, my life, in my life, in my circumstances. In my circumstances. As, I speak, As I speak, I declare it. I, declare it. I decree it. I decree in, it. Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 